Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from one of the older papers, the old specification of uh, M1 GCE from June 2016, the 6677 um, syllabus. And this question here is about, um, I guess, impulse and momentum, um, but a bit of other things also mixed in with it. Suvat it says a particle P of mass 0 0.4 kilograms is moving on a rough on rough horizontal ground when it hits a fixed vertical plane wall. Immediately before hitting the wall, P is moving with a speed of 4 meters per second in a direction perpendicular to the wall. The particle rebounds from the wall and comes to rest at a distance of 5 meters from the wall. The coefficient of friction between P and the ground is 1 over 8. Find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P by the wall. Okay, so we've got a few things to consider here. One is the fact that we have rough horizontal ground. So we're going to have to deal with friction. As we can see, they've given us a coefficient of friction. Now, they ask us to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P by the wall. Okay, so first of all, let's make a little diagram to illustrate what's going on. You have the rough horizontal ground. You have the wall, Okay, which I'll just or this like rectangular shape there's the wall there and you have the particle that's gonna hit the wall okay so this is the particle p which is hitting the wall okay so it's traveled this way so it's it's hitting the wall so before you could say before this is before the uh, uh, before it hits the wall just before it's the wall it's traveling at four meters per second just before it hits the wall and just after it hits the wall we don't know. We don't know what it is. Uh, what we can call that VP for now. We don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, we know that its mass is. This is the particle P. We know that the mass is 0 0.4 kilograms. Okay. So that's the situation um, that's happening just before it hits the wall, and just after it hits the wall. Now we know. We know that the impulse, the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P by the wall, its magnitude will be the same as the impulse exerted on the wall by P. And the magnitude that uh, the, the impulse that has been received by the wall would be given by its change of momentum. Okay, the change in momentum gives you the impulse. So the impulse would be the change in momentum. So in this case, that would be M times V minus U. So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.4 times this VP, which we don't know, minus the original uh, velocity, which is 4. So if I know what Vp is, if I know what Vp is, then I can work out the impulse. Okay, so here I'm taking, for this thing, I'm taking, for this particular uh, formula, I'm taking this way as positive. Okay, because I've considered this as positive, therefore, this is going to be a, a negative velocity where it bounces off the wall. Now, we don't know VP. We don't know the velocity with which it bounced off the wall, okay, from the question they didn't tell us. However, they told us of information that will help us to work that out because it says the particle rebounds from the wall and comes to rest at a distance of five meters from the wall. So I'm going to take, I'm going to draw a new situation here. Okay, I'm just going to um, think about this. I'm just going to just think about what happens after it hits the wall. So I'll just draw an, uh, a new diagram, just so that it's separate from that diagram there first. Whoops, I don't need the circle. I need the rectangle. Okay, so this is the wall and this is the floor. Now, this ball is now bounced off and it's traveling in this direction. Okay, it's now traveling in the opposite direction. It's in contact with the surface. So it's now traveling in this direction. It's bounced off the wall. This is the velocity with which it bounced off the wall. I'm going to call that u here. Okay, that's the velocity I'm going to find now. In fact, you understand? Um, because that's the situation now after it's hit the wall. We know that it comes to rest five meters away from the wall. Okay, five meters away from the wall, it comes to rest. So that's its final velocity. Okay, after five meters. All right, so it's five meters, it's, it's traveled, and its final velocity is equal to zero here. Okay, so this is the initial velocity, which is the same as this VP. Now, it's traveling in this direction, so I'm going to take this direction as positive for this part of the question. 
Okay, I'll take this direction as positive because that's the direction it's moving in. And I know that um, I want to find what the acceleration is. Now, the acceleration is going to be basically decelerating, as we can see. So you got its weight acting straight down. Let me just do that in a different color. You got its weight acting straight down. You got its weight, which is 0 0.4 G newtons, because its mass is 0 0.4, remember, um, 0 0.4 G newtons. And you've got the reaction force, that's because uh, it's in contact with this rough surface. So you've got the reaction force, which is important here, because we've got to find uh, the force of friction, which is acting, opposing the motion. It's going in this direction here. So the friction is acting in the opposite direction. As it's in motion, you have the maximum value of friction has been achieved. And F max, we know, is equal to mu r. When something is in, in motion, then the maximum value of friction has been achieved, which is given by mu times r. So now, to find what r is, we can resolve forces parallel and perpendicular to the motion. So if we're thinking about parallel to the motion, what we have is the only force acting on it in this plane is f max. So we can say that the resultant force is basically negative f max, because it's acting in that direction, f max. And that's equal to the mass, which is 0 0.4 times the acceleration. And if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, we have R equals 0 0.4 G newtons. Okay, so we can combine that now. We can say F max, okay, is equal to mu R. Okay, so we can find what, um, we know what um, F max is now. So F max is equal to mu R. So F max is equal to mu, which is 1 over 8 times R which is 0 0.4 g. Okay, so f max, let me write this as fractions. It makes, I think it will make life easier. 0 0.4 times 4 over 10 g. Okay, so this 4 gives you, uh, cancels with 8. That gives you 4 here, sorry, that gives you 2 here, and that gives you 2 here as well. Uh, sorry, 1 here. Okay, so you're left with 1 over 20 g. So f max is equal to 1 over 20 g. 1 over 20g, that's f max. Okay. All right. So we know, therefore, that um, you've got minus 1 over 20g is equal to 0 0.4a. So if we solve that, or solve that for a, you have minus 1 over 20g is equal to 4 over 10, which is 2 fifths a. Okay, and if you multiply by 5 and divide by 2, you're going to have minus 1 over 20 g times 5 over 2 equals a. So you're going to have, that cancels with that. It's going to be a equals minus 1 over 8 g. So that's the acceleration. We know it's negative for sure because we know that um, it's decelerating to rest. So let's use the SUVAT equations now to find what that initial velocity of this is after it's hit the wall. Okay, so we know it's traveled 5 meters, as the question told us. We know that the initial velocity is what we're trying to find. That's equal to, that's VP that we got in part 1. And the final velocity we know is 0 because it came to rest. The acceleration is minus 1 over 8 G, and the time we don't know. We want to find what this is. Okay, so we can say that um, V, U, A, N, S, we can use V squared, equals u squared plus 2as. We have to know these equations of motion. So we have u is 0, v is 0, sorry. u is what we're trying to find, so we'll call, we'll call it u squared, plus 2 times minus 1 over 8g times s, which is uh, 5. Okay, so you're going to get 10 over 8. So you have um, 0 <coughs> equals u squared. You're going to have, this cancels with that. So you're going to have minus 5 over 4g, okay, minus 5 over 4g, um, so u squared therefore will be 5 over 4g, so we can say that u, u will be the square root, I'll leave it in exact form, it will be the square root of 5g over 2, that's what u is. All right, so that, that's the value of u, which is equal to, that, that therefore is vp. That is the velocity of the particle after 
it's bounced off the wall. So therefore we can say the impulse is equal to the m, as we said, it's going to be the final velocity, which is vp, minus the initial velocity, which is uh, the initial velocity, which is up. So we got 0 0.4 times, now vp is going to be negative this. Why? Because after it hit the wall, okay, this is, we're taking this as positive in this first situation here. So VP is a negative, okay, uh, root 5 over, root 5G over 2. That's what VP is, negative root 5G over 2. That's what VP is because in the, in the situation we're looking at first, this is before and this is after the collision, okay. This is going in this direction, so I'm taking that as positive initially. When it bounces off the wall, it'll be the opposite sign. So root 5G over 2. So we're going to use this as negative root 5g over 2. So you're going to have 0 0.4 times negative root 5g all over 2 minus 4. Okay, so what does that give us? Well, we can just put that in a calculator and find out now. So we're going to have um, 0 0.4 multiplied by, and I can put this in a bracket, um, minus square root of 5 times 9.8 divided by 2 and take away 4 close that bracket and that gives us negative 3 negative 3 newton um, seconds okay that's the unit of impulse um, and uh, you know, we of course the impulse. This what we found is that the change of impulse of the ball, which is the impulse given to, um, you know, exerted on p by the wall, which will be in this direction. Okay, the impulse given to the ball is in this direction. That's what we've just found. But it says find the magnitude of the impulse. All right, so we don't have to have the negative sign. All right, we don't have to have the negative sign. We shouldn't have the negative sign. If we do mention impulse and the direction, we should mention you know, in the opposite direction to which it was moving initially, something like that. You don't put negative. You talk about its direction in terms of how it was moving before and after because we, we didn't have to put, we didn't choose left or right as negative, all right? Um, I mean, we, didn't, we weren't told which way to choose as negative or positive, so we don't put negative or positive. But in any case, when it says in the magnitude of the impulse, we just put um, the sign. Uh, the the, uh, the 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 amount without the sign so they just put three newton seconds that's the magnitude of the impulse that's what they're looking for don't write the answer with the negative sign you don't need to write the direction because it just says find the magnitude if it did say find the mag the, the direction you say the impulse would be acting in the direction the impulse exerted on the ball would be the direction which is opposite to its initial motion okay it changed its motion you see so there we have the um answer to question number three okay so it's a bit more involved than a normal question about impulse and um, momentum but um, you have to consider what happens after the collision to find the speed after the you know the, the speed immediately after the collision you have to look at this situation afterwards where they're talking about friction and coming to rest five meters from the wall so it's a bit more involved this question than a normal type of impulse question so something for us to be aware of you know, you have to take care of a few things. The other thing you have to take care of is the signs. Because here I'm taking right as the right as positive according to my diagram to work out the impulse. But here I'm taking the left as positive for my, um, you know, working out the, the initial speed after the collision using SUVAT. So you've got to be very careful about signs and directions and stuff. And, of course, over here again, I had to take this as a negative value. Why? Because um, we're taking in... Our initial cal calculation here for the impulse, we're taking the way it was initially moving as positive and the rebound as negative. Okay, so that's a negative speed. All right. So important for us to realize that. Um, so there's the answer to part three of this question. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in this playlist that will appear over here. Um, other questions from the topic of um, impulse and um, and momentum can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.